The Sharks suffer another epic collapse on Saturday night, but do give themselves some separation in the chase for Mac on Celebrini. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite tanking team in the entire NHL. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, probably a part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day, even when they give up a 4 uh lead, uh, even when they continue to be the worst team in the NHL, and they've lost seven straight games even when their top prospect pulls out the rooster trick. Uh, so if you want to be an everyday, all you got to do is just follow on wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be discussing another epic collapse by the San Jose Sharks. So we'll uh, talk about what happened in this game, talk about the prospects uh, or not the, yeah, we'll talk about the prospects as, as well. Um, and then we'll talk about, you know, Bordelow, Zetterlin and why the Sharks should just re-sign Devin Cooley. Um, so before we get into all that, do want to let you know that today's episode uh, is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Whoa! Oh boy! Um, yeah, that was a bad loss. Um, not the worst loss in franchise history, as uh, one particular person thought it was but um it was another terrible loss in a season that has been filled with embarrassing and terrible losses uh whenever you're up for nothing on a team you should probably win that game is fact so much so that this is the first time the sharks have ever blown a four nothing uh lead in franchise history and lost the game uh per our friend um does uh, all the start the sharks stats on twitter um yeah, I mean, at this point, as Sharks fans, we, it's all you're almost numb to it, right? I mean, you look at like I still think the most embarrass the most embarrassing loss of the season to me is still the Penguins ten to two. Um, that one because you just came off a game where you lost ten to one and you showed little to no effort in that game. Um, but again, this is still a bad loss for for the Sharks team. Um, but the silver lining, though, is there's now a five point separation between the Sharks and the Blackhawks. Um, Sharks have finally crossed the 40 point mark. Uh, Blackhawks have 45 with, um, and the Sharks do have one more game to play. They got 12 games left. Um, they would need to basically, yeah, five point, five more points than the Blackhawks in their 12 games left. I'm feeling pretty good about about where the sharks are at here especially with uh the upcoming shark schedule but we're not counting our chickens until they hatch etc etc yeah it was just another and it, it we'll dig into the numbers of this game but it's very much the offense just as we've seen all season long the offense is going to sleep and not able to create that sustained offense. And the Sharks are such a power play heavy team, right? How many think back, you know, how many Sharks goals are coming from the power play? Um, you had two out of, you know, half their goals tonight or on Saturday night came from uh, the power play. And that's just been the short end of the power play. It's just not sustainable, right? Like the power play is such a finicky, you know, where thing, right? The power play is is not a sustainable. It's a tool, right? But it, it can't be your all your offense, and that is right now the Sharks' offense is very power play heavy right now. Um, but let's talk about some of the, the the bright spots, at least from this game. I think you guys start with with. The two forwards, Fabian Zettelin and Thomas Borla, both of them had two goals in this game. Zettelin also uh, chipped in on an assist as well. And again, seeing Zettelin, who's now over 20 goals, um, really turned into something this season, right? And that is that is what this season, if you're going to lose a bunch of games, right, 
you want to one lock up the the best odds to win you know the draft lottery and the sharks are well on their way to that and two you want to see who is going to be parts of your long term you know who like who's going to be here for a while who's going to turn into something and i think it's pretty safe to say fabian zetterlin has turned into something and i've said it before i'll continue to say it, like what we thought of Fabian Zetterlin when he got here last year, where he had a, a miserable end to the season, right? I think it was like three points in 22 games. And a lot of Sharks fans were like, well, what are you guys talking about, Devils fans, with Zetterlin? Um, Zetterlin is, I, is easily one of the most, like, you know, is a fan favorite right now and has been an absolute monster all season for the Sharks. And um, it's just good to see him kind of get rewarded and find his game. And now you look at that contract that's, you know, He's got going into next year of one year left that is one point, you know, four or five million dollars or whatever it is, under one and a half million dollars. That contract looks like a steal compared to some of the other contracts um, the Sharks have on on their cap. And yes, a lot of these contracts will be going away relatively soon. But um, Zetlin is lining himself up for a really nice payday um, coming up here soon, and um, you have to feel excited about. Baby and Zetterlin's future uh, with the Sharks. And once the Sharks continue to inject more talent and he has more talented players around him, um, what Zetterlin's absolute ceiling could be. I mean, we could be looking at a potential 30 goal, 35 goal score out of Fabian Zetterlin with the right pieces around him. That is as a potential career year uh, for him because he's, he's just, he's good, man. He's good. Um, another player who I think we can kind of, you know, start to erase a lot of the questions about was Thomas Bordalo, right? Um, Bordalo has been playing some of his best hockey, I think, especially since the, his call up the after the, the trade deadline or before the trade deadline. You know, another two goals, um, you know, another power play and even a strength goal from, from Bordalo. And I know all, most of his scoring has been on the power play. But again, the Sharks, like I mentioned before, the Sharks are such a power play dependent team that any scoring they get whatever you can get wherever you can get it from right now and borlo has been kind of a nice injection into the sharks power play and i think you're seeing again he's never going to be like a shutdown defensive uh forward but he's making a better effort you're seeing him kind of fix those mistakes right and um in his own defensive zone and i think you're seeing a, a more kind of physical willing to engage physically and again we know Borlo is five foot nine, five foot ten, whatever he is, and like we know what he is statue wise. But he's not afraid to get into the middle of the ice. He's not afraid to kind of get into the board battles and try again. Just try your best, right? That just give an effort, and we're seeing that from Borlo. And I think we can kind of a lot of questions that we had maybe going into the off season with Borlo about. Hey, is Borlo? You know, what are we getting with Borlo? Is he maybe kind of plateaued? Plateaued. I think he's answered those. And I think that move from center to wink has allowed him to kind of focus on what he needs to focus on. Again, playing better in his own zone, right? Um, being a little, not being so careless with the puck, et cetera, et cetera. I think Borlo has done that. And I think the shark, as a Sharks fan, you have to feel really good about the direction of Thomas Borlo. And my bold prediction of 10 goals in the AHL, 10 goals in the NHL, he just needs four more goals in these last 12 games. Um, I'm feeling really good about that, that bold prediction. So, um, yeah, horrible, epic collapse by the Sharks. But again, right. We are looking at trying to look at the positives, uh, because again, if you don't laugh, you have to laugh to keep from crying, um, with this season. So, and another positive Devin Cooley, and I know I feel so bad for Cooley, um, cause you know, he could taste that first win. Right, first start at home. First, like his family's there. They show the picture of his mom basically like going, What happened? Uh, she had a couple more choice words in there, which I'm not allowed to say on this podcast. Um, you could tell he wanted it so bad. He loves being a shark. Um, like he loves, you know, growing up. This is you know, you you could tell how much it means to him. If I'm my career, I'm I'm like handing him a new contract for next year. Having him as your AHL, NHL, like if you need him to play in the AHL, cool. Um, we know Mackenzie Blackwood not hasn't had the cleanest health history, right? 
Vita Vanacek, um, who are your, your presumptive starters for next year. Neither of these guys have had the clean. You need to have a third competent goalie. And I think Devin Cooley has answered those questions of being about a competent goalie. Um, I am 100%. You should re-sign him uh, again. If he's playing in the AHL and then he needs to come up and play in the NHL, he's the perfect goalie for that. And he's still young enough where he can kind of figure out what he needs to continue to work on. Um, again, I think he loves being a Shark. He wants to be here. Um, I think it's, it's a big thing for him to be here. I don't see what the, the problem is. I'm 100% trying to re-sign Devin Cooley. Again, it's just a vet min, like vet min one-year deal. Let him kind of come in here and be your new Aaron Dell as he continues. You kind of continue to figure out what he has. And I think he's going to be a good guy for some of the younger guys. And again, he wants to be here. So uh, we're going to dig into the numbers of this epic collapse and kind of figure out where things went wrong um, here in just one minute. If you want to go catch maybe a Warriors game before the playoffs start, uh, you want to go catch the Giants as the Giants are now loaded with a lot of new fun players, or you want to try to get sneak into one more Sharks game before the season is over, go check out Game Time. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The thing I love about Game Time um, is you can actually see what your seats are going to look like, right? You're not going to get there and be surprised at your view. Nothing worse than getting to an event and realizing you have bad seats. Actually, the only thing worse than that is when you go to check out and whatever app or website, they slam a bunch of fees on top of that. With game time and they're all in pricing, you know exactly what you're going to pay when you go to check out. No surprises, no anything, like no fees. You know exactly what you're paying. So check out game time. Uh, they take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on, L O C K E D. Owen for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, uh, let's dig into the numbers of this game. And again, um, uh, this, this is kind of the same story that we've seen from the Sharks. Right, you come out strong in the first period. Um, you you set the pace of play. You're controlling the puck. The other team like. We've seen this from the Sharks, and then this if this, if games were twenty minutes long, the Sharks would be one of the best teams in the NHL this year. It's it's crazy how good they come out in the first period and then just absolutely fall apart after that. So uh, in this game, we had fifty minutes and fourteen seconds of five v five um, shot attempts, fifty eight to forty nine in favor of the Sharks, fifty four point two one percent Corsi four. Um, actual shot, shots 28 to 24 in favor of the Sharks at 5v5. Scoring chances for 27 to 19 in favor of the Sharks. High danger chances 8 to 12 in favor of the Blackhawks. Expected goals for 1.81 to 2.37 in favor of the Blackhawks. And I, this is where this this is the story of the game right here. First period. Expected goals for 1.07 to 0.57 in favor of the Sharks, right? The Sharks came out, they set the pace, they scored twice, um, they took advantage of an early power play, right? They set the, even beginning of the second period, scored two goals right away, and you kind of, again, we got this, right, guys? Um, but then, second period, expected goals for 5v5. 1.27 to 0.43. The, the Blackhawks scored two goals in the middle of the second period and were pushing, right? Um, kind of, especially at the end of that, that they're pushing until the last two minutes. The Sharks had a really nice response in the final two minutes. And then the third period, um, 0.53 to 0.31 expected goals for. Granted, there's two full power plays. Um, each team got a power play, and then the Blackhawks had an empty net at the end of the there. But yeah. 0.53 to 0.31 and expected goals for in favor of the Blackhawks. Just the Sharks just unable to have that sustained offense. And even the shot attempts, you know, in the third period, it was uh so the shot attempts in second period, 20 to 23 in favor of, of the Sharks. But we saw the Blackhawks just getting more scoring chances. They had 11 scoring chances to the Black, to the Sharks, eight high, six high danger chances. 
to the Sharks one in the second period. Third period, um, 16 to eight shot attempts in favor of the Blackhawks. Um, they just, they could sense the blood in the water and they were able to take advantage there. And then in overtime, the Sharks, you knew the Sharks were dead in the water because they, the, right? How often does a team give up four goals um, and then continue, like, go on to hang on? Like, you knew this game was over um, with just the way the Sharks were kind of playing right there. They had, it was too much for them to kind of restart the engine, if you will. Like, they were just too far out of it, um, had given up too much, and there was no way that they were going to be able to kind of catch up in this game. So, um, yeah. That's it. When you take your foot off the gas, it, it, it's, it's just too hard to kind of get things going again. So, um, looking at the line, so we had um, Zettel and Granlin caution um, as your first line, um, Bear Banoff, Kanan Zadina as your second line, Borlo, Sturm, Bailey as your third. Um, and then we also, of course, had the uh, Carpenter, Eklund and mcdonald line as your fourth line so again do our best with the fourth line with mcdonald who's um between his center in and or be, between playing forward and defenseman it's hard hard for uh uh websites to track him but zelen granlin caution played 12 13 eight shot attempts to 12, 15 gave up four to nine extra shots had a goal gave up a goal 0.24 to 106 expected goal uh in favor of the blackhawks in that line four to five scoring chances one to three high danger chances uh five seven seven uh zone starts bear Ben of cunning zadina had a great game 922 uh time on ice 21 to five shot attempts 12 to one actual shots didn't get a goal though didn't allow a goal 0.61 to 0 0.08 expected goals four 10 to one scoring chances five to nothing high danger chances um with four to one zone starts that line really was clicking there um so curious to see what the sharks do with eklund if they're going to keep him on the fourth line Ugh, we need to move eklund up so i i, I kind of want to see the all one line grandland eklund zettelin move caution back like down anyway Borlo Sturm Bailey played 858, 14 to 9 shot attempts, nine, seven to two actual shots on goal, did have the goal as well. And Borlo was this close to getting a hat trick. Uh, that would probably would have sealed the, the game. 0.27 to 0.42 expected goals um, in favor of the Blackhawks. Eight to five scoring chances, one to five high danger chances, um, with six to four zone starts. Um, as for the Eklund line, so uh, try to kind of piece it together. Ryan Carpenter played 828, uh, eight to three shot attempts. Seven is that 5v5 again, 72% Corsi four. Uh, McDonald 846, time on ice, 5v5, seven to five scoring chance uh, shot attempts, 58.33. Uh, and then Eklund, who played uh, a little bit more, 1040, kind of had to jump in for uh, Cunning when Cunning was out after the fight. 11 to 9 shot attempts, 55% to Corsi 4. So that line had a pretty, you know, another positive night from them. So, um, yeah, uh, again, I'm curious to see what happens with the with Eklund. So we've had two games of him on the fourth. I said to give it a couple games, right? You've blown... You've had two losses, another one where you had an epic collapse. Um, where does Eklund again? I get it. You're trying to maybe put him some easier competition, et cetera, et cetera. Take the load off him a little bit, whatever. But he's played well, right? Another assist, a beautiful assist on the power play for, for Eklund to settle in. Um, just like the no-look pass. He's too skilled to be playing on the fourth line. We'll see. I love to see him move back up here soon and get some more of this ice time um you know that i think he deserves i, mean, I know you're trying to give him a little bit of a rest here et cetera, et cetera. but it's going to be time to see uh see him back on the ice doing things uh in, in bigger roles here soon so um as for devin cooley 26 saves on 31 shots at all situations five goals allowed 3.81 expected goals against uh, 839 save percentage Seven high danger saves on 10 high danger shots. Um, 
five mid danger saves on seven mid danger shots and 13 for 13 on the low danger. So again, numbers aren't always the prettiest. I know Cooley Cooley's still a bit of a project, but I think there's again, I still think there's something there with Cooley. And I'd like to just keep him around because I again I think he's the perfect a your perfect Aaron uh Aaron Dell replacement. That guy who's just kind of hang if you need him to play a couple NHL games. He can play a couple of NHL games if you need him kind of in the room with, with some of the younger guys. I think he's perfect role for that. I think he can help solidify the AHL goaltending issues um, and allow guys like Romanoff and Krona. I think everyone fits in their slots a little bit better if Cooley continues to hang around. So, um, yeah. That's how you lose. That's how you blow a, a four goal lead. Um, just ask the Pittsburgh Penguins, who also blew blew a four goal lead today. So, um, yeah, Sharks Penguins handshake, epic handshake emo, uh, meme. So, uh, somebody who's had an epic weekend himself, Will Smith. We'll be talking about uh, Will Smith's weekend, Quentin Musty, Cagnoni, all that fun stuff here in just one minute. I know the season's almost done, and regardless of the Sharks' uh, current standings, I want to remind you that you could still win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleepers are our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick some of your favorite uh, players, whether they're NHL studs like McDavid, Crosby, McKinnon, or some of your favorite Sharks players like Slippery Pete, uh, Mikel Granlin, Fabian Zetterlin, and record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. 20, 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict, predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sharks fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleepers. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, um, man, the future's bright. The future's so bright. Will Smith. Uh, let's start with Will Smith. So um, named the. Hockey East MVP uh, of the tournament after dropping the rooster on Boston University. Uh, four goals, uh, including one an empty netter to seal it as, as BC beats Boston University six to four. He also threw an assist on that as well. Um, yeah, kid's good, man. I, I've been telling you guys, the kid's good. Um, he is having an epic run um this season and uh, we'll be talking more about will smith tomorrow as our good friends uh, hattie and sebastian from locked on angel prospects we record a, a whole podcast about what the shirk should do with will smith here but um five goal or five points and then he had on friday night uh another goal and three is so he had four Four, he had nine points in two games this weekend. Um, again, these aren't just like, you know, like Boston University is is the number two team in in, in the entire, uh, like all of hockey. And they're yeah, he's just doing what he wants. And yes, I know the line is great, et cetera, et cetera. Shark, yeah, Sharks fans, like you should be so excited for Will Smith and what he's going to bring to see, like the energy he's going to bring to the Sharks. Oh, it's like the future is bright. And I don't care what other people say outside of the organization. Um, not that I'm part of the organization, like people who, who cover prospects, people who watch the Sharks, people who cover it. Like we know, we know Will Smith's going to be a special player for the Sharks going forward. Um, what, what Will Smith's doing right now is it's up there with one of the best freshman seasons ever. Like he's chasing Jack Eichel, like Jack Eichel, who is one of the best um, like NCAA players ever. It's turned out to be a really good hockey player uh, in the perf in the pros. Like Jack Eichel's really good. The Sharks might have something super special 
on their hands here with Will Smith. And there's still going to be questions. And we talk a lot about these questions tomorrow, but um, I don't care what other people say. The Sharks have something. To... The Sharks made the right pick with Will Smith. So, yeah. Uh, and then Quentin Musty, who, um, who, <laughs> I'm going to pull up Quentin Musty's games uh, from this weekend because, and he's still, as I'm recording this, he's got one more game to play. Um, so he plays here in a little bit. This is his last game of the regular season. Um, if, if, if somehow get, if he gets four points in his last game on Sunday, on Sunday, uh, Quentin Musty is going to end the season at a two points per game in the OHL and his D plus one year as an 18 year old. That is like, ridiculous but um so um musty had on saturday two goals uh two assists for four points on friday two goals four assists for six points um he had four shots on goal on friday and eight shots on goal on saturday he is an absolute monster. A mon like quit and I'm gonna have plenty of time this offseason to discuss what the sharks should do with Quentin Musty. Um, because he's in a very interesting spot of he's probably he's too good to go back in the to the OHL because he's just gonna rampage through it again. Um but is he good enough to play in the NHL? And we'll have plenty of time to, to discuss that and what the sharks could do potentially do there. But Quentin Musty is putting uh, the signature like the, and he's doing all this in like he's going to have played fifty three games this year in the OHL. He has over a hundred points in fifty. You know, he had a hundred over a hundred points in his fifty two games. Like, just yeah. And there's going to be questions again. Can it translate from the juniors and, and stuff like that? And I know a lot of people are like, well, Brandon Code did this. You know, he had a hundred points in his final season. Brandon Code was twenty, right? Brandon Coe was 20 when he did this. Um, Quentin Musty's 18. And that was Brandon Coe's final season, right? Uh, Quentin Musty theoretically could go back two more seasons to the OHL and, and play if he wanted to. He's not, um, but yeah. <laughs> He's an absolute monster. And then Luca Cagnoni, um, the first defenseman in 30 years in the WHL to hit 90 points. Um, another two goals and an assist on Saturday night. The future is so bright for the show. And I know there's going to be questions about Cagnoni with his size and stuff, but as someone who's watched watched him play, the offense is there. The defense, again, it's going to be about finding the right partner for him. But it's not like this isn't a Ryan Merkley situation where he just kind of does like there's no effort. Luca Cagnoni is the real deal and getting him in the fourth round is going to look silly, silly in a couple of years when he's doing that, when he starts to kind of get into the AHL and stuff like he, I told you when the Sharks drafted him, I told you, I, I said, this guy's got that chip on his shoulder undrafted in the WHL, right? Worked his tail off to get where he's at projected second round pick fell to the fourth round and has worked his tail off this season. Um, yeah. As a Sharks fan. And then you're going to be adding another top three pick, potentially the top pick in the draft in this year. Yeah. Guys, it's going, this, this year has been horrible, horrible as a Sharks fan, but it's going to get better. I promise you it is going to get better pretty soon. It's, it can start getting better as soon as next year. Um, so, and yeah, we'll, we're going to discuss that tomorrow. So make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Uh, again, tomorrow's a really fun episode. Um, I have Hattie and Sebastian on. They both take a side on if Will Smith should go back to one picks if Will Smith should go back to college or one if the Sharks want to uh, want to sign him to his ELC. And I'll give you my final thoughts on what I think the Sharks uh, should do or slash will do with, um, with Will Smith. But um it's a fun one. It's a good one. So, uh, thank you guys for, for hanging in there. Um, I know we got 12 more, 12 more of these games to go through. So, um, make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts. And of course you can watch on YouTube. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at locked on sharks. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. 
Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.